Hi everyone, today we're gonna to be starting a project called Overlapping Shapes. To get started, I am going to present my screen so that we can just kind of go over some basics. So just here, I wanna go over our standard, which is students will be able to know and use elements of art, shape and space in order to develop a deeper understanding of how shapes are used in works of art. Our standard is that you will be able to demonstrate a willingness to experiment, innovate and take risks to pursue ideas, forms and meanings that emerge in the process of art making or designing. Here's just a quick reminder of our expectations. So over the past two weeks, we've been talking about space and shape. So geometric shapes usually have straight sides with the exception of circles or ovals. They're made by people and not usually naturally found in nature. And they also have very specific names where organic shapes have curved sides, are found in nature, are usually one of a kind and very unique, and they don't have a specific name. We also have been talking about space, mostly positive and negative. So with positive space, the main thing that you wanna remember is that that's the main focus of your work and the thing in the artwork that's closest to you. Anything that's in the negative space is your background. So we're gonna look really quick at some artwork by Sonia Delaney. She's an artist who was born in 1885. She died in 1979. She was born in the Ukraine, which is over in Europe. And what's really interesting about her is she was the first living female artist to have an exhibition of her work in the Louvre in Paris. The Louvre is pretty much the most famous art museum in the world. So to be uh, the, one of the first living female artists to have a show there is a really big deal. And her work is called geometric abstraction. So as you can see, there's a lot of geometric shapes in her work, but they kind of are shape shifting and we can't really tell what it is. So for this project, what you're going to do is you're going to pick a shape, either geometric or organic. If you have a tracer, you can absolutely use that. For mine, I used a roll of tape or this box of tacks to make a square, a ruler also would work really well. But if you don't have a tracer or don't want to trace, that's totally fine. You can freehand your shapes or you can go for a more organic shape. Um, after you draw that, probably I'd say at least seven times, making sure that they're overlapping, which means going on top of each other, um, you wanna make sure you fill up your whole space. Use your page wisely so that your eye moves around the whole thing. After you're done drawing, you can add color and contrast. You can do that by either using crayons, markers, or colored pencils, or if you just have a pen or a pencil, you can either shade or add um, hatch marks by coloring it in a little bit. Once you're done your drawing, you're gonna upload a picture into Google Draw, which is attached to this assignment in Google Classroom. So I'm gonna stop sharing there and I'm gonna come over to my Google Draw. So remember we get to that by going to the specialist classroom, into the classwork tab, scroll down to the art topic, and then this assignment is called overlapping shapes. So once you have your Google Draw open, you'll have your drawing. This might be one that you've done. You can see this is just trace circles um, that I then traced in black marker. Or if you add color, it might look something like this. This is the one where I use this box to trace. And remember, you're also focusing on your positive and negative space. So if you are adding color, you might wanna think about keeping your negative space all the same color and switching up some of the colors for your positive space. So like in this, in this drawing, all of the green spaces, that's my negative space there in the background. Or my shapes, the blue, pink, and orange, they're in the positive space, they're in the foreground, and they're the main focus of this drawing. So to upload this into Google, Google Classroom, once you have your Google Draw open, 
you're going to come over to this mountain, click down to camera, that pops up. When it does, you're going to try to hold your drawing right in front of your camera as still as you can. Click that yellow button and then click the word insert. If you want to resize the picture and make it bigger, that's totally fine. You do that by dragging the corner. If not, that's okay too. So once you are done taking the picture, you're going to close out of your Google Draw and then hit submit inside Google Classroom. If you have any questions, please email me or private comment on Google Classroom. Have a fantastic day.